even Alexander in his book, Proof of Heaven, talks about how the knowledge that he got when he went over, you know, when he went into the, the in his near-death experience was like, he said it was equivalent, and this just really rung true for me. He said it was equivalent to if a chimpanzee got to be a human for a day and then had to go back to be a chimpanzee. He said that, that the knowledge that you get when you go over is like that and then you go back to being human and it and it, it that is exactly what it feels like so it would be impossible and the, the reason that we don't know it all the way that we um the way that we the way that we understand it immediately you know we we understand immediately what it would take me the rest of my life of heart, you know, de devoted, dedicated study to even scratch the surface of. And the reason for that, my understanding for the reason for that is that it would just, because this life, the reason we are, that we manifested into a human life and the body and all that is, is for, um, is for experiences and to, and that it's already, the experience of human existence is already so mind-boggling and so confusing that if we basically basically what it is is that if we understood if we understood it the vastness of the universe when we were in our human life it would probably stagnate us so that we wouldn't we wouldn't we wouldn't see the point in acting and so we wouldn't get the experience out of the the life that we're supposed to because we would see how insignificant or how small it is but it is really important but that we would just we would see how small this life is in the big scheme of things of our of our spirit and our soul and all that and that it would just be to 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 know all the all of the all of the universe would just make it make it seem um, uh, uh, not overwhelming, but almost, almost just stagnate us, almost seem like a little bit, um, like we wouldn't see, we wouldn't think it was big enough or it wouldn't be pointless, it would be, it would be not, that we would miss the point of it, you know, like we wouldn't see the point of all this striving and all the, all that, because we'd see how small it is in the scheme of things. Um, so, uh, and, and that wasn't the reason that we, that the whole experience, the whole chance that we have of, of materializing into a human form, that opportunity exists so that we, you know, we can do things um, that, you know, we, don't, we wouldn't want to ruin by the knowledge of too much. And so that's also why I can't remember it all is because it, there is definitely a veil in place so that those of us that have had NDEs and stuff like that can't come back. First experience I had with anyone dying was my grandfather. And, uh, you know, I was really close with my grandparents. These are my mother's parents. And they were, they were the ones that really unconditionally loved me. They were my one, one example of unconditional love that I had growing up. And, and, um, and uh, when he was dying, I remember going back and sitting on his on his uh, bedside, and he was an old man. He was, gosh, well into his 90s. I think he was like 96 or something like that. He lived a really good life. And, you know, really lived right up until he died. Like, just a couple of weeks, he had fallen. He, he had just gotten a cancer diagnosis. And that, to him, it was a mental, like, to him, cancer meant you're dead. And so he kind of gave up with that. He also fell in the yard and hurt his back and was unable to get out in the yard, and the yard was basically his, had, had boiled into being basically his life towards the, the yard, the neighbor kids, that kind of stuff was his life. And so he couldn't do that anymore. You know, he really didn't see the point. So, so and he'd been kind of um, sleeping a lot and kind of in and out of, you know, consciousness, and, um, and he was at home, and, and I sat on his bed, and he told me that he was dying, he was going to die, and... I was young and I was like, oh, Grandpa, you're not going to die, thinking that I was cheering him up. And I remember him saying to me, 
like he was trying to tell me I'm trying to tell you I'm dying it's okay I'm just trying to let you know and um and it was the most it was comforting you know it was it was my first experience with death I thought to myself I thought to myself he's not asking me to cheer him up He's, um, he's just, he's informing me of something that he knows. He's not guessing. You know, he's not speculating. He knows. And, and, uh, more and more, I am coming to believe that people that are dying know and that they are starting to have transitional experiences and as I look at my son's music I am realizing that he knew he was going to die and he was he was trying to tell me in the same way that my grandfather was trying to prepare me um Yeah, and and he was okay with it. You know, he was okay with it. It was this life that he was having a hard time with, and um, and he was letting me know that it wasn't my fault. He was letting me know that I did a great job. Yeah, so. Uh, but I I am, I am starting to I, I have kind of this feeling that that. Part of why his brother and I aren't getting, uh, don't have, like, why he's not right here with us. He is right here with us. And this is kind of the other thing is I do feel that he's here with us. But, you know, it's not like, it's not like I, I am seeing him or I'm having experiences or I'm having dreams like his, like, um, like my son's girlfriend is, you know, things like that. But, um, I think that that has something to do with how close we we were, and and that it it could interfere with what both of us are supposed to do. So, um, but you know, I would I would I would love to, and and may, and actually, and and that if I could, if I could, and that and that my chances of getting to have those experiences with him increase the more I can be okay with him being gone you know it the more that I can be trusted not to say oh I miss you and I wish you would be back here the more I really want him back here the less likely it is that I I'm going to be able to experience him is my feeling I you know I don't know that but that was sort of something that came to me that if I if I could get to be really okay with him being gone then I might be able to see him you know and and um and you know I, I, and and because it would be hard for him to see me suffering you know it would be hard for me to say oh i miss you so much and you know um that would be hard for him you know so you know i don't want to do that but anyway so i absolutely there's a lot in common with my story with other stories and I had not done I had not ever read near death experiences ever 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 until this happened to me and I, and I still I really and I and I didn't I didn't get into reading them or anything even after this happened to me I still really haven't hardly um, read any of them I haven't been big into anything to do with a, a community of people that have had a near death experience or anything like that um, and uh, and only now that this has happened with my son has it even has it really started to um become more of an interest um but uh, there definitely is a the the wisdom that comes from from it now is is benefiting me a great deal and so um i'm i'm definitely one that can right here be here to tell you that um there is definitely life after death and um, the physical death and really the saddest thing about 
about the death is just that we mess them. You know, they're they're gone from, he's gone from my life, and he's gone, you know, right here and now, and that, you know, I don't, I don't get to have that experience of having him here with me in in this life, right now. But maybe I can f figure out a way to have him with me some other way, and then for sure I know that he's gonna be. We're gonna be. We're gonna be together eternally. I definitely know that. Definitely know that. The main thing I, I know is that that the message that that I carry with me now is that one thing I know for sure is that love is what matters. Love is what matters. And, um, and that's, that's really what you need to tap into. You need to question, you need to ask yourself that will inform your choices is what's the loving thing to do. And if you operate that way, you can't go wrong. No matter how much all this is confusing and all that, it doesn't really matter. If you go with that one simple question, that will inform your choices, and you can't go wrong that way. <laughs> all right. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for listening. This is a long one today. And I will, um, I will talk with you later. I think maybe I'll make a little, I'll make a little series about something to do with principles about, around the near-death experience. And... Um, Neil, since we're, since we're on the subject, while well, I'm in this mindset. Okay. Thanks a lot, you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>